Welcome to Playboy magazine, June 1969. We have our uh, front cover with the Playmate of the Year, uh, Connie Kresge. And we have a little rundown on some of the people appearing this month. We've got uh, Gore Vidal, of course, in the Playboy interview. Um, we've got Michael Lawrence. Uh, we've got Roy Brad uh, Ray Bradbury, sorry, Gene Shepard. And we have some other nice pictorials as well. We'll get straight into the first few pages. Usual adverts, which you'll all recognise. Uh, a little rundown, of course, in our Playbill of uh, a summary of the magazine uh, for the month. We've got Accurist here, um, Accutron by Boulevard, the most accurate watch in the world. And then we have Wide Boots GT, Goodyear Tires, of course, and Bacardi Mini Party. Uh, a little note here on libertarianism, and this is highest praise to Cole Hess for coming back from the left to right the death of politics. A fresh breeze of reason for the smoke-filled rooms. Highest praise as well to Playboy for braving the fury of the power holders and power seekers by publishing it, which is an interesting kind of rundown when we look at today. You don't really have many libertarian candidates that have any chance of winning. The power is held by Republicans and Democrats and in the UK we have a similar situation with Conservatives and Labour. Uh, we have some independent candidates but of course they're never really going to get any kind of power to make any changes. So a nice little note there. We've got the BSA or BESA, uh, the bold way to make time. Um, the Father's Day gifts, we've got Hitachi. Uh, some Schlitz beer. Are you ashamed to be caught che checking into the same hotel as your suitcase? More men depend on Samsonite than any other luggage on earth. And I still believe Samsonite is a really good brand today. See it in the airports all the time. Whenever you travel, you always see it in the gift shops and uh, those uh, kind of travel shops that you get. Sman off here. And the wet set is making waves in the King's Road collection. So we have these uh, wetsuit sets or kind of vests and, and trunks. Uh, we have Firestone tyres, not too much else here. Uh, we've got uh, Michelob beer, and then Playboy After Hours. Uh, lead women around by the nose, we've got Flying Dutchman uh, tobacco here. And then we've got the Suzuki 69, the T500 2 Titan. Uh, quite a nice looking bike here, I like the colour of this one, this uh, kind of like mustard yellow. It says uh, a top top speed range of 110 to 120 miles per hour, uh, 47 blazing fast horsepower. And you think today if you've got a bike with that kind of horsepower, that size engine, I think you can be pushing like one, 150 maybe, 160. The engines are so much better obviously today. Um, but it just shows you just how uh, th sort of much things have come along. But I bet the handling on that Suzuki was terrible. I bet that was one bike you don't want to be doing 120 mile an hour on anyway. Uh, Dewar's profile's got Run Buck here. Nice advert from Mercedes. And this is kind of the advert you would expect from Mercedes. It just, something stands out about it, the way it's presented. It's different from other manufacturers. So we've got the 280 SL here. And then in the background, we have the, where is it? It's the bigger model. The one that Hugh Hefner, I think, actually owned the Gullwing version. Um, where are we? I'm just trying to find it. The Gullwing here. Um, just trying to find out what engine size this was. Um, I'm sure I read this in here, perhaps not, but um, it's a nice looking car though, this one. And I think it was the first one to have a, a direct fuel injection, I think I read as well. So nice looking advert. Playboy here, just uh, of course for subscriptions. Uh, the Iced Man cometh to the King's Road collection. And then Union Royal Tires. Uh, Triumph 69 GT6 Plus, some more kind of space-themed adverts. Um, this time it's from the 45, sorry, Colt 45 Malt Liquor. Uh, some nice white shoes, the Crosby Square. And then we have our little pull-out guide that we generally get every year. This is um, for mixers, that kind of thing. Southern Comfort have, have sponsored this for quite a number of years. So you have their... Um, 
sort of information on the parties that they host and places where you can get Southern Comfort, particular bars around the country. And then you have these um, cocktail lists as well, which always look good. Obviously, these pages were a bit stretched because they were fold outs. And then we've got Bauer here, Jade East. The Fiat 850 Spider, $2,136. I think that Mercedes was 5000 and something dollars. I think that we've just gone past, so almost double the price. And we have Gordon's Vodka. Not too much else. Uh, this one's interesting, the Jaguar XKE Topless. Um, this one in the UK was known as the Jaguar uh, E-Type. So we had the convertible version. You had the kind of coupe with the, the hard top roof. Engine was huge. It was like a V12, I think, 6-litre uh, engine. Uh, a good car, uh, a really good car. And it was um, very collectible. They're very expensive today. I think some of the really good models sell for upwards of 150000 perhaps more. Um, priced at $5,534 and yeah a, a really nice looking car you remember it from Austin Powers as well we, we had that in the film PJ Paul Jones and then we've got Command here got Marlboro of course and as I said before Marlboro cigarettes always stand out. Their adverts, it's always kind of the West, the kind of cowboy look. I don't know much about the history of Marlboro. I don't know who founded it, um, kind of what era it came in. Something I may need to look up, actually. A um, few letters here, Playboy Advisor. Miller High Life, more Old Crow. Um, Penal Code Reform. And then we've got Guardians of Morality, Praise for Playboy. Uh, news front here. This one I forgot to read, The Biological Predestination. I had marked it down to read it, but I didn't get round to reading it. Um, so I'll just have a quick look through this now. Your editorial reply to Dr. Kamini states that the available evidence indicates that homosexuals show a compulsion based on phobic reactions to heterosexual stimuli. This is open to question. While one is always unhappy at having to contradict so sexually uh, liberal a publication as Playboy, your statement, the sexually inverted male finds himself rejecting his biological role, is so wrong that it must not go unchallenged. Neither males nor females are inescapably programmed to follow particular biological roles. What can safely be said is that males and females do have certain biological potentials, but to believe that nature has purposes of some sort would be to fail so would be to fall into the trap of teleology that every freshman philosophy student learns to avoid like the plague biologists report observed behavior they do not impute purposes to the phenomena it remains for the sociolog sociologist among others to interpret such behavior in its social implications today we are giving careful study to the ambiguous vast complex of relationships and values social structures so interesting uh someone writing back into the magazine obviously contradicting the point uh, obviously talking about the se the social issues around biology and sex as well which is again a very big issue today here we have the uh, american motors javelin two different models obviously the standard and one that's been uh, modified for racing uh Tipperillo. Uh, not too much else of what I've read there. I hadn't marked anything down. Um, some more discussion around marijuana and drugs, that kind of thing. Gore Vidal, a candid conversation with the acerbic social commentator, political polemicist, playwright, producer and author of Myra Breckenridge. So yeah, he was... Um, as it says here, as you know, social commentator, political polemicist. He famously had a run in with um, uh, Char uh, Buckley Jr. Um, was it James Buckley Jr.? I could always forget the first name. But the, the famous interview is in the last magazine that we reviewed. And um, they had a bit of a, a spat and it went backwards and forwards, different comments between magazines and, and that kind of thing. I think uh, Buckley Jr. had um, 
insulted him um, in, in terms of his sexuality as well. So, um, yeah, had a little run in, but an interesting guy, uh, Gore Vidal. Uh, can you spot the druggist from Toledo? Of course, we have the Volkswagens mixed in with, mixed in with all the other high-performance uh, sports cars of the time. Got the XKE, as we've just seen up here, the Mercedes. Uh, looks like the Fiat, I think, the Porsche as well. Porsche, to me, looks like the best one out of all of these. Um, perhaps the Jaguar, but um, I'd, I'll take the Porsche. So a nice interview to read there, certainly worth taking a look at. Ballantines, and then we have Silver Thin. Yamaha, uh, this is the 250 Street Scrambler, the DS6C. J&B. And then we've got shoes for athletes' feet. This is Prokeds at Uni Royal. America's number one in the sun, Copper Tone. Um, we've got some Schaefer beer. What sort of man reads Playboy? Downwind from Gettysburg by Ray Bradbury. And this is about, to summarize it, it's about a uh, a man who recreates a mechanical version a sort of ai version of abraham lincoln and uh, at the grand unveiling uh, the robot is assassinated um it's a, it's worth a read you we remember ray bradbury from fahrenheit 451 one of the first feature length novels that they had featured in playboy so worth a worth a read and obviously looking to him separately as well take a look at some of the things that he's done over the years John Dempsey, more cartoons there. The paramilitary right, um, those paranoid patriots, the Minutemen plot to save America by assassinating their enemies and taking over the country themselves. We've had a lot of talk recently about the, uh, what was it, 6th of January, which is what they're calling a um, uh, insurrection, I think it was, uh, you know, a planned takeover of uh, a government building. Whether... I don't know which side you fall on from what I've read. It didn't sound too bad. I mean, someone died and there's been conflicting information about uh, who motivated it. Um, I think what we can say is that it wasn't as bad as it's been made out to be. There were comparisons uh, for the insurrection to 9-11 and Pearl Harbor, which is crazy. But um, it's a nice feature here. It talks about, let's say, the paramilitary right wing. It does exist. It is perhaps quite violent and they do talk about certain violent acts probably not so much anymore i think a lot of them stick to their kind of forums and their own spaces to talk about it but it's something that's been an ongoing concern of course i've got to say it here and here we have some photography of course some sexual um photographs uh, stills from films etc so it's gradually getting a little bit more racy again just they're just turning up the notch a little bit playboy and um, they're just um, pushing things along and we'll see that in this feature by Robert L Green he does the attire he's always done the fashion pieces for the magazine and this is the first one I think that features some nudity in it we haven't had uh, female nudity featuring in his um, in his uh, articles before so that's interesting to see. Again, pushing the boundaries just a, a little bit more, incorporating a bit more nudity. Alberto Vargas. And then we have, uh, this is by Seymour, Seymour Krim, um, the American novel made us. This is nice, uh, Man at His Leisure by Leroy uh, Neiman. I keep saying Nyman. It's Neiman, I think it's pronounced. Someone pointed out in a previous video. Uh, but I like the colour on this one. It's really, really good looking. Uh, I do not like the Dr. Feldman. This is fiction by Henry Slazar. And then we have uh, Hair Apparent. And this is our playmate of the month, Helena Antonaccio. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Um, she's still alive at the moment. She's um, doing, I think... Uh, a Patreon. She does some adult content. You can find her on Twitter. Um, she has her own web page, so you can uh, take a look at that for yourself. But nice set of photos as well. But she's continued the um, 
kind of sexual theme going forward. I believe she still does it on Patreon today. Here's her full centerfold. Uh, Playboy is party jokes. Ericsson with some more cartoons. And then we have Paella y Sangria. This is Thomas Mario. I do like Paella. If you've never been to Europe, in particular Spain, um, they do some very good Paellas there. I expect they do some other variation in, I guess, places like Mexico and and uh, and that kind of thing. I'm not sure where it originates from. I assume it's a Spanish dish, but obviously exported around the world. Uh, Ray Russell here. Uh, for dads and grads, and I've got some little gifts here. I say little gifts. It's a car, a camera, some sort of like um, motorboat here. So not so small. And here we have some more, like a jet ski, a little Honda mini trail motorcycle. Playboy's Guide to Mutual Funds by Michael Lawrence. For those who know little about the stock market and don't have time to learn, owning shares in an investment company can prove an enriching and challenging experience. Uh, everything was changing so fast you had to be real phony to keep up. Frank M. Robinson, uh, A Life in the Day Of. Got some more wordplay. Robert Carolla. And then we have our Playmate of the Year, uh, Connie Kresge. And here she is with her this is a javelin in the background. I believe that's the, the car. Um, oh, no, it's not. Hang on. A Shelby GT500. Uh, circumstances have pushed me into acting now, and I love it. Connie tells us her new Playmate Pink Shelby GT500 should provide attention-getting transportation to and from the Universal sound stages. I wonder what actually happened to these cars. I wonder if they held on to them, whether they sold them. be interesting to know that somebody must own that, um, that GT500 somewhere. It must be a collector's item. Uh, I'll have to have a look into that. Uh, here she is in uh, some more pictorials. So a nice feature for the Playmate of the Year. Uh, Wanda Hickey's Night of Golden Memories, Humour by Jean Shepard. Some more cartoons, Eric Sokol. Why don't you bug out now and I'll call you Friday. Breezy does it. See the shirt, see the man under the shirt. Cool man, cool Robert L. Green. So we have these kind of shirts. Not my particular style, but obviously we're heading into the 70s and that kind of becomes a little bit more popular. You know, kind of uh, open shirts, uh, big collars. Obviously we've got the flares. So we're getting some nice little teasers for it as we go forward. So this piece here, uh, I think this is in the last issue as well, Hostile Man. Um, so a little comic strip here. So feel free to give it a pause and have a read if you're into those kind of comics. Uh, I'd walk a mile for a camel. We know the usual theme for those. Buck Brown. That taste that beats the others cold, Pepsi. Hugh having a favorite, Pepsi and Jack Daniels. Uh, meet the man who makes an honest bourbon, but with manners. This is I.W. Harper. Playboy Forum here. And then we have out on the scene, Tom Jones, which I'm sure you know the name. Um, a, I think he's from Wales originally and um, popular in um, the UK um, specifically, but he's obviously done lots in America, lots in Las Vegas. Generally, everyone will know him. Uh, still alive today. Obviously, he's been on some TV shows, The Voice, I think, in the UK. Still does lots of shows, that kind of thing. Arthur Ashe, and this is our tennis player. First, um, I think, black uh, tennis player to enter the Davis Cup. And I think he won three, um, not Grand Slams. I think it actually may have been three Grand Slams, I believe, as well. Um, so I haven't read these actual on-the-scene information here, but I, I know generally who they are. Buck Henry was the only one I didn't really know of. Um, but he's done some sort of various films, worked with some bigger directors, did some features with Mel Brooks, I believe, as well. Uh, go where the action is, Stardust. Uh, some old spice, of course, with the lime twist. Some brute. 
We've got a carriage here. Looks like a little Mexican guy taking uh, his lady to the birth control clinic. Um, not sure of the the meaning behind it. Am I missing something on this? So they head into the birth clinic. She goes in, comes out, and he's happy. Maybe that's just, you know, abortion makes people happy, maybe. You know, who knows? Uh, your Playboy key makes summer swing. Apply now and join the fun. Uh, make swing a thong 69 in Jamaica. Got some uh, Interlandi here in the house. The electronic Timex sells for less than $100, uh, $50 less. Schlitz, Mort Liquor. And then we've got Jockey Life. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, we've got an end to most of the restrictions now for COVID in the UK. So we're gradually going to start moving back to some normality. I'm going to try and head over to the Playboy Club in the next few months. Now things are starting to um, kind of quiet down a little bit and uh, sort of vaccine passports aren't going to be required. Uh, we've got some JVC here. I expect if you're watching in the US, you're probably under the same kind of impression that things are going to start changing. I think a lot of restrictions have changed. If but perhaps if you're not, if you're in California or in New York, I think things there are still quite strict. We've got Hang Ten and I think this is a surf short. Sorry, uh, not too much else. Playboy pin. And then we have. Pan 10, everything right for your hair. Photographed aboard the 12 meter American Eagle off Newport. Campus. Some more cartoons. I thought I saw a pussycat early times. And this is, uh, is this some kind of cocktail, Kentucky. Bourbon whiskey. This is a new one, actually. I haven't um, seen this one before. Uh, Remington. And then we have Rally Cream Wax. Gain Wilson, back with the usual surreal cartoons. You'll remember he's a uh, pictorial we had last month. Tuber Tuborg there. Nine Flags. Um, shave. Aerosol, nine flag shaving cologne. That's a new advert. Didn't notice that when I was reading through actually. Some more nice cartoons. Jose Cuervo tequila. So we've got a few nice um, new artists gradually starting to come through to the magazine as we head into the 70s. So we'll keep an eye on those. Smilby here. And we've got Nemrod Treasure Hunt Adventure. Playboy After Dark, Sammy Davis Jr. Dean Martin here. Obviously Hugh Hefner up here with some of his lady friends. And that's us done for this month. Uh, next month, what do we have? We've got the Playboy interview of Rob, sorry, Rod Steiger. We've got Birds of America. Um, uh, with Justice William O. Douglas is back with The Public Be Damned. We have Robots by David Rovick. It's a new name I haven't seen previously. So look forward to that one. Not too much on the back page, just the Ford Maverick. And it's very green, anti-establishment mint. So that's us done. I'll see you a couple of days for the next issue. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you all very soon.